So they told me if I was really nervous, I should picture everyone naked, but since I can't see any of you, you're all Channing Tatum, okay? <laughs> all right. <laughs> I want you all to imagine a room, not just any room, a room that you know really, really well, a room that you spend a lot of time in. Maybe your bedroom, or your kitchen, or your office. This is a room that you have to know intimately. You know the things that are inside of it, things that you've collected over a lifetime. Or if you're like me, things your husband has bought and hasn't told you about. <laughs> you could close your eyes right now and you can picture that room, can't you? You know where the bed is next to the dresser, or you know how to get from one room to the next, or maybe you know exactly how to get to the drawer with the spatulas in it, very important. Now imagine you're standing in this room that you were so familiar with and so comfortable in, and suddenly the lights go out. Now we have all been there before, a fuse blows because somebody's trying to make a soup sandwich in the microwave, or there's a thunderstorm and the power goes out in the block, or maybe the light bulb just burns out. It's happened to all of us. But suddenly you're just cast into the darkness, and that safe and familiar place that you've been to so many times before becomes completely unknown. Something about that darkness makes everything so unfamiliar and so uncertain. In 2012, my light bulb began to flicker. I woke up one day, it was Labor Day weekend, and I woke up in the ICU, and I couldn't see anything out of my left eye. And I don't mean things were blurry or fuzzy, I mean it was pitch black. It was like somebody had thrown a blanket over my eye. And I flag down the doctor and I tell him, I tell him, I can't see anything out of my left eye. I don't, I don't know what's happening. And he dismissed me as an overreacting, hysterical woman. He said, ah, you're fine. We ran a CAT scan. You're not bleeding in your brain. You're fine. It's great. I was like, oh, great. I didn't know that was an option to worry about. That's awesome. Great. So he discharged me home later that day. Little did he know that two weeks later, I would be sitting in my neurologist's office, and I would be told that the damage to my optic nerve was permanent. I remember sitting inside of my neurologist's office, and he just sat there staring dumbfounded at my chart. I don't understand. Why, why didn't they do an MRI on you? Why didn't they get you to me sooner? Why are you coming to me so late? I was like, I don't, I don't know. But I'm here now, so what can we do? What's the next step? Because in my mind, there's always a next step. There's always a next way to reach the next goal. Nothing. I was like, what do you mean, nothing? That's not an answer. That's not in the medical textbooks. What do you mean, nothing? He says, there's nothing I can do. This man the subject matter expert, the man who had spent half of his life studying and training in order to help and fix people just like me, was sitting there telling me that there was absolutely nothing that he could do for me. He said, I need you to be prepared for the fact that you'll probably never gain sight back in your eye. And furthermore, I need you to understand that this condition may get worse. I was like, well, what does that mean? He said, you're going blind. And I can't do anything to help you. You know, I don't really remember much after that. I don't remember what he and my dad talked about during the rest of the appointment. I don't remember what my dad told me on the drive home. I don't really remember much. 
It was a punch straight to the gut, and I was down for the count. And in February of 2015, which was less than three years after my first visit to him, I was declared legally blind. My flickering light bulb burnt out. You know, a lot of people don't know what I mean when I say blind, visually impaired. It's kind of a blanket term. So let's talk about that for a minute. According to the National Federation of the Blind, the most common misconception that people have about blind people is that we all live in total darkness. Well, that's not true. Only about 10% of people who are visually impaired live in total darkness. 10%. That's 10 out of 100 people, 100 out of 1,000. It's really not as many as you think. That's about the amount of people in here who are still thinking about Channing Tatum. <laughs> so what is blind? What does it mean? Well, according to the National Eye Institute, legally blind means a person has to have 2,200 in their best eye. Well, what does that mean? That's, that's a lot of words. Let's dumb it down more. It means if you have one eye, you've only got one, the best you can see out of this eye is 2200 with all of the corrective lenses and magnifying glasses and all of the wingdings and tumtums that Sherlock Holmes can conjure up. The best you can see is 2200, which means you can see an object at 20 feet what somebody at 200 feet could see. So you can stand in a crowd and sure you can tell there's people there, but what you see is not the same as what I see. Or you can go to a convenience store, what I can see is not the same as what you can see. That's the reason why I come home with the orange wasabi soy flavored peanut butter instead of the mayonnaise my husband asked for. Sorry. <laughs> so now, you know, blindness is a spectrum. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's just like anything else. What my light bulb going out looks like is not the same as what the next person or the next person. You know, according to the World Health Organization, there's an estimated 285 million people in the world who are blind. That's a lot of people. You can't expect one shoe to fit them all. The most common causes of blindness are cataracts, diabetic neuropathy, age-related macular degeneration, and glaucoma. And as you can see, what they see is all very, very different. Nobody's perspective is the same. Nobody sees things the same way. So as my light bulb was burning out, not only was I experiencing a literal descent into darkness, but I was experiencing an internal one as well. You see, I've known for my whole life that I wanted to be a musician. When I was four years old, I remember sitting in front of my grandpa's radio cabinet, listening to his old records. My favorite was, I like bananas because they have no bones. <laughs> you laugh, but it's a real song. <laughs> When I was seven, my mom put me in piano lessons with the crotchety old teacher down the street. I was in every music ensemble that my school offered from the time I was, f I could breathe until now. I'm still in everything. I remember in sixth and seventh and eighth grade, you have to take those career aptitude tests and it's like, your child is gonna be a rocket scientist. Uh, mine said performer and musician every time. My light bulb, burned so long and so bright, and I was so confident in it. And then suddenly, it's gone. Everything I knew was gone. I was thrown into the darkness, and I had no way out. And I stood alone and scared in this place that I don't know anymore. And I didn't know what to do. You know, I didn't really know that I had hit rock bottom until all the music stopped. I stopped playing. 
I stopped listening to the radio. I even took the ringtone off my cell phone because it was just too depressing. I would sit in a silent room in a silent apartment for hours on end every day. Because what could I do? I was worthless now. I, I couldn't even read the notes on a page. What was I going to do? And you know, we've all been there before. We've been to that place where things are just so overwhelmingly bad that you can't even breathe. Maybe not even overwhelmingly bad, maybe just overwhelmingly stagnant. Where you're standing there and you're stuck and you don't know which way's left and right anymore and you don't know which way to go. Maybe you're at a dead end job that you hate, but you gotta pay the bills. Maybe you were rejected by that really cute boy at the coffee shop that you had your heart set on and you're just afraid to try again because who wants to get their heart broken again? Maybe you're just one short paycheck away from getting kicked out of your apartment. We've all been there before. We are all there. You know, now I can say that I'm grateful for what happened. You know, now. Before, I was cruising along and my light bulb was shining brighter than ever, and, but I never really challenged myself. I never really looked internally to see what goals could I really achieve. And what boundaries could I really break? What could I do with my life? How great could I become if I changed my light bulb? You know, speaking of light bulbs, since you asked, I did a little research on them. Did you know that Edison's first light bulb lasted 200 hours? That's like 50 days. It's almost two months. Imagine that's your goal right now. You have a goal, and you plug it in, and you go strong for two months, and then everything comes crashing down. What are you going to do? Are you just going to stand there in the dark and mourn your lost light bulb? You know, you go to the store, and you buy the, the light bulb that's on sale. You know the ones I'm talking about. They're next to the six-month-old expired Halloween candy that we all buy. And you go in, and you're so excited to go home, and you plug it in because you saved a dollar on that light bulb, and it's going to be great. You plug it in, and you flip the switch, and it immediately burns out. You think, hey, I'm going to try this, and you immediately fail. Which is fine, because that light bulb was purple, and nobody wants their kitchen to look like a rave party. So, <laughs> But you know, these new light bulbs that they have, these LED light bulbs, you know the ones I'm talking about, you have to show a character reference and a credit score to buy them. <laughs> These light bulbs last between 25,000 and 50,000 hours. 50,000 hours. That's almost four years. So you imagine you, you find a dream that you're passionate about or something you really want to accomplish, and you plug it in and you go strong for four years unhindered. And then all of a sudden, your light bulb burns out. You know, you can get really far in four years. So I guess my question for you is, do you know what you want? Have you thought about it? Really thought about it? that scary little place inside your mind that you're all afraid to go to because it's dark and it's unsure and the light doesn't shine there. Maybe you really want that promotion at work. Or maybe you really want that new car. But right now you're standing alone and scared in the dark 
and you don't know what to do. Well, the way I see it, you have two choices. Your first choice, you can continue standing there. Stagnant, never progressing, never moving forward, never really living. I mean, yeah, you'll be safe, maybe financially or emotionally or physically for a while, but you're never really going to achieve what you could. You're never going to become as great as you could be. You know, no one ever made it to the top without risking a few things, without failing a few times, without getting a few bruises on them. You ought to see me. I, I'm purple always on the shins. I run into things all the time. I ought to look where I'm going more. <laughs> you're standing there in the dark, and you're holding that light bulb that was your dream. And when, you, when it was bright, it flooded the room with light, and it gave you confidence and assurance and certainty, and you knew where you were going. But once it extinguished, it took everything with it. Your job, gone. Your confidence, gone. Your car, gone. It's all gone. Or you can be like me. You can pick choice number two. Change your light bulb. Get up and move and do something. Don't just stand there mourning your lost dreams. Find a new one. Tweak the one that you had. You know, you may have to change it a hundred million times, but keep going after it. I don't care if you move a hundred miles in the wrong direction, at least you're getting up and you're moving and you're progressing towards something. Change your light bulb. Change your perspective. You know, you could put in a new light bulb and it may burn out immediately. It happens. Sometimes you just have to go find a new one. Or maybe you'll put in a new light bulb and you realize everything looks a lot different than you expected. I know mine does. I can't say this is how I expected my life to look. But just go out there and do it. Be afraid. It's okay to be afraid. But don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to really achieve the greatness that's inside of you. Because we all can achieve greatness. It's inside all of us. Go out there. Move. Don't just think about it. Do it. Think about what you want and then move towards it. Do you know what you want? Do you know how great you could be if you changed your light bulb? You know, I never really stepped up in my own life until I went blind, until I was thrown into the darkness involuntarily. So now I want you all to join me in the darkness for a moment. I want you all to close your eyes. No peeking. I mean, it's not like I can tell, but still, let's do the honor system. Come on. I don't want anyone to peek. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about what it is that you really want. Do you want a healthy body? Do you want a new job? Do you want to travel the world? Your own business, maybe? Do you want Channing Tatum? What is it that you really want? no matter how crazy it seems? What is it that you could still achieve in this life? How great could you be if you changed your light bulb?
Thank you.